think any field, any art, it has to give hope, a sense of living to the person who is seeing it. Not depress them, but encourage them. I grew up in a place called Hubli. It's in Karnataka, South India. In India, it's not really common that people study fine arts. But for me, I always loved design. And empty, any empty space, me designing was my thing. Nature taught me so much more than what textbooks taught me. The way how wind moves, the way how, actually, Psalmus describes nature really well in the Bible. And that really moved me. I mean, if he was able to make songs out of it, why was I not able to do something with paint? That really triggered my brain. Henna is an ancient art form. In Indian culture, all the brides apply that, like up till here. It's really crazy, but it takes about seven to eight hours just to work on their hands and their feet. The reason why they do it is they think it's, it enhances the bride. It, it's just like an adornment to yourself. And uh, it, it has a lot of health benefits too. It cools down your body temperature and it's more like a spa treatment because of the oils and all the beautiful aromas you get in the henna. There's a chemical reaction that happens in the paste. After five, 10 minutes, the stain starts releasing. So it, it reacts with your skin, which is perfectly normal and organic. It's nothing to be alarmed of. So the longer I keep the henna paste on my skin, the longer the dye releases. So I started doing henna when I was 10 years old. My neighbor was a Muslim and it was her wedding and she got her hands all decked up with henna up till here and that amazed me. And uh, after two days, her stain was still there. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I mean, this doesn't go off. I mean, I want to do that too. There are different applications also. Uh, people use a needle-based tube to do henna here. I prefer cone. Cone is nothing but a plastic roll that you roll and then you tape it with a pin. So the pin gives a proper diameter like for the thickness and thinness. I like to work with a fusion of thin and thick lines. So it gives a lot of depth, I feel. There are a few traditional designs. Uh, for brides especially, we do a lot of portraits in henna, like the bride with a dupatta on her head the rich heritage and the rich culture, which is in India, many people don't know in Detroit. So when I do those designs, they're like, oh, what is this? What kind of design is this? What kind of an art form is this? So when I explain them, they're aware of the culture. They're aware from where it came. Other forms are like the Arabic forms, more like contemporary forms. When I do brides, I use uh, the embroidery which is on her dress. So I use those as my inspiration and the love story of the bride. I mean, how the bride met the groom, where did they meet, what is the common thing between them. I sit with them for eight, nine hours and they explain me their entire story. And as they explain their story, I on the, on the spot I build a story up in the henna. I think that lightens them and they, they feel good about it. For me, the time has to stand still when I paint. I want people to see hope when they see my paintings. I recently learned this uh, fluid-based acrylic art. So I wet my entire canvas and I play soft music. This is therapeutic to me. I just put a lot of water on the canvas and just release a little bit of paint and let the paint move in the way it wants to move. It creates its own form and it's not bound by any thought or any imagination or something. It just moves freely. And I love the freedom of it. I like uh, painting faces of people just to capture that emotion, just to capture what they feel at that moment. Capturing that story, it, it's challenging to me and I love to take that challenge. There are a lot of uh, new things I've seen and that really saddens my heart. I was inspired by the persecution that's happening in China. So that's like a lady, she is tired, she's fed up of all the chaos of this world and all the disappointments and heartaches everywhere. And she's longing for a place which is, 
which is serene, which is pure, but she's not finding it. And she's just wondering one day, will there be one day? So I like to capture that, will there be one day on her face? In India, and not many people know about fonts. And so in my fine art college, I came across this beautiful handwriting and it was calligraphy that that's when i thought i was like it's so gorgeous i would want to learn that but i never found the supplies to learn how to do calligraphy when i moved to us i found the proper uh, techniques of calligraphy and that's how i learned calligraphy the thin and the thickness it's more like pen and ink dancing calligraphy and handwriting is a ballet for me i mean it's just beautiful the way it curves and perfect sleek lines and then the way it's elaborated, I, I just love it. If my paintings are hung anywhere, even in the window or somewhere on the street, if one person is walking by and if he's having a hard time in his life and if my painting could speak life or hope to him, that's all I need.